Now that doesn't include obviously all the people that we employ that actually doing all the production and a lot of uh, independent contractors around the actual events that we do around the world, but kind of corporate employees is about 400. Can you give us an idea just uh, on some of, some of the the specs, I guess, of, of the facility, yeah. you know, square foot, or what do you, how much are you It's going to be about 180,000 square feet, 40,000 of it will be the uh, Athlete Health and Performance Center. Um, as you can see from the model, it's going to be a lot of outdoor space. You know, one of the things that we have evolved into really is a media company, and we're creating a lot of content, doing a lot of things. We want to provide a lot of kind of group work spaces, a lot of think tank spaces, whether it's indoor or outdoor, to kind of foster that creativity so we can continue to raise the bar. You mentioned uh, when you, uh, some of the guys who were up there breaking ground with you the Hall of Fame. Is, is that a possibility as well, to have an actual Hall of Fame on, on the ground? I, not not on this location. We've talked about a Hall of Fame at some point, but it will probably be at an area that will be more conducive to actually having tourists and fans be able to go through it. I mean, uh, as you can see, this is a, a building for work, and it's going to be fairly secluded from that standpoint, other than athletes being able to come and go. You know, we want them to be able to train and not be uh, you know, interrupted by fans and things like that. Are you going to consolidate your media productions in this particular location? We're still going to have our offices in LA. Okay. Uh, we still have a group of people that work out there primarily on all of the uh, Hispanic programming that we put together. We saw some pictures like with Anderson Silva in one of the, the, the rooms, like we're going to uh, have some rooms, some teams rooms. Like yeah, we're going to we're gonna obviously um, have various components of the UFC brand throughout the building and throughout the performance center. One of the interesting things is that each conference room will be themed around one of the UFC legends or somebody that's in the Hall of Fame. So Anderson Silva, of course, is in that group and he will have a very cool conference room. Yeah. What is the targeted completion date and when do you plan to take ownership? I think it's going to take us about 15 months to complete, so that should put us towards the end of February, March of 2016. Is there an estimated cost that you're willing to share? No, we're not going to share that. I joked earlier, we probably, we actually don't even know exactly what the cost is going to be yet, but we're not going to make that public, no. Lorenzo, over the years, if there's one thing you, you thought of recurringly as far as like in the old headquarters, if we just had space to do this or if we could just do this thing in the old headquarters, is there one thing that always came up that you think of now you would be able to do in the new space? Look, the biggest thing for me is just first having enough space. I mean, right now we've got people literally on top of each other and in buildings separated all throughout where we exist in that area where we are right now. So it makes it very difficult to even get together uh, for a meeting or if you want to get together on the spur of the moment or you have an idea. So having everyone under one roof is just a big accomplishment just in general. Then the other thing is creating these collaborative spaces where people, you know, a lot of a lot of what you would see in maybe an office in Silicon Valley with a lot of startups where, you know, people are just getting together in a think tank to come up with new ideas and, and things like that, as well as I love the idea, especially on days like today, being able to go outdoors and have meetings outdoors or spend some time outdoors just to get out of a you know a, an office which sometimes can you know, make life a little bit mundane. Let's say you're maybe in a bidding war with a, a new recruit, maybe a, a Olympic gold medal wrestler or something like that. How much of a factor do you think this uh, facility is going to be in his decision to maybe sign with the UFC over another company? Well, I think this and everything else that we do for our athletes, the way that they're treated when they come to an event on site, they're treated like professional athletes, and then having this resources, you know, resource, we're hoping that that can tip the scales in our favor in trying to sign a new athlete. I've heard Dana say before that, that your father had advised you against buying the UFC. If he could uh, see this day today, what do you think he would say? I think he'd be pretty proud. I, I know that. Um, he originally said that because, like many people, he just didn't understand what we were doing or what our vision was or what we wanted to turn the UFC into. All he understood is, is what the prior UFC represented and what it was. But I will tell you that you know, within about a year or two of seeing what we were doing, he became our biggest fan and was uh, very proud of, of what we eventually built. So what footage you have at the Sahara? The Sahara it's, uh, it's about 20,000 feet. It sounded like you addressed it earlier, but I couldn't hear the answer. Bringing all the Ultimate Fighters and that thing produced on site here at the new office? Not in phase one. We actually have a master plan where you actually see the back of it with the row of trees. This master plan to build a production facility, which we may get to over time, and there we would actually do all the, the reality shows and Ultimate Fighters on site. Have you thought about what you do with the old facility? I mean, I know it's just an old rundown warehouse, but it's also got a lot of history there. It does have a lot of history. That's interesting. It's kind of cool that it's in a nondescript location. People don't really know it exists, you know, but eventually that lease will run out and we'll probably build something here.
How often do you expect to see the athletes? I know that that's a big part of this. I mean, how often can an athlete come and take advantage of facilities? And how do guys in Brazil or in Asia, I mean, how do they take advantage of it? Well, look, I mean, they're all going to be welcome to be able to use the facilities whenever they want. It's going to be a 24-7 facility, first of all. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be there for training, for rehabilitation, but also for education. What we found in this sport is that it's taking time for the training to um, kind of progress and develop. When you look at other sports, and you take the NFL, for example, you know, 30 years ago, they were still putting on pads on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and banging on each other until they figured out that if they did that, they couldn't actually compete on Sunday. Well, the fact is, is that we need to educate our fighters that you can't just go full speed every day. You can't spar every day. There's going to be um, new technologies as far as how to warm up, how to cool down, how to rehabilitate. If you unfortunately get an injury or you blow out your knee and you have to have surgery, now we're going to uh, invite you to come to Las Vegas where you can live here and stay here, where we can actually take care of you. No different than if you play for a professional sports team and you get injured, you have to show up at the rehabilitation facilities until you get cleared. So really trying to take a little bit of, of leadership in this position so we can help prevent injuries. And we also just want the athletes here. We want them to be a part of what we're doing. If they work out and then they want to come and eat in the team dining room with the rest of the team members that we have, that would be great. I know how much you know fighter pay is being discussed right now. Was there any concern at all? Like, here we are building this massive facility. We're going to come under criticism because everybody's talking about fighter pay that we're not distributing enough to our fighters. Sure. Look, that's always going to be an issue. If we distributed 200% of our revenues, people would be complaining about fighter pay. The fact of the matter is, fighter pay has continued to increase every single year that we've owned the company. We we pay way more than anybody else in this space. That's a factor. And you do have some fighters that maybe aren't happy with what they get, but at the end of the day, the fighters that achieve great things in this sport and get to the level of actually being able to make a career out of it, you don't see many of those athletes complaining. And that's the fact of the matter. The, the, the guys that are rising to the top are making the majority of the money. And that's just the factor. And look, relative to this, we're making an investment in the future so that the company can, t can continue to go on and achieve even bigger things so that the revenue will continue to grow. And it, obviously that will continue to flow down to the fighter. So this is no different than any other business. Where do you see this? Because I hear people say, well, the growth of MMA is stagnating or it's, you know, it's not doing what it once was. Do you think this is a, a big statement to the health and the, and the financial success of the industry and of the USC specifically right now? Look, how anybody can say that the, the, the sport is stagnating is doesn't make any sense. We're coming off of a record year. We just did an event down in Melbourne with 57,000 people headlined by four women where we're forging, you know, leading the way for, for women in sports. Um, we're continuing to do things to raise the bar, whether it be production, where we're taking the events, open new markets. I mean, it's far from stagnating. And we now have athletes that are not just stars in MMA, like historically they were. They're stars in sport. They're stars in pop culture. I mean, Ronda Rousey is as big as it gets as far as being uh, famous. Right, Conor McGregor is well on his way. John Jones is well on his way. So we're far from stagnant. I tell you what, it doesn't feel like we're stagnant when we come to work every day with everything that we're working on. There's another big property being built down the street, uh, the new arena. There were some talks about you guys potentially getting involved in naming rights. Is there any update on that? Is, is there any uh, progress there? No, no update. 